Hi, um, my name is Amy. Um, I'm very thankful to Sonia who gave me her time. Um, and I just wanted to first start off with, um, I just wanted to hold some space for the trauma and the pain that we, that the immigrant communities have been going through this weekend because our brothers and our sisters are being tear gassed at the border and arrested, our children and mothers. Um, and um, I also wanted to reiterate the fact that those tactics that um, ICE is using right now are the same tactics that they've learned from police. Um, I want to acknowledge the fact that um, Mexican Americans and uh, Mexican migrants are not the only ones who have experienced being tear gassed. Um, this is something that has been used on um, black activists, on Southeast Asian folks. This is not new. And um, the very violence that ICE has learned is, is coming from the police. So there should not be police in schools. And I have to admit that I don't have much plan to say because everyone here has already really said it. Um, I, well, I'm thankful that Jennifer Cheatham is finally not looking at her phone when I'm speaking. I'm really thankful that um, James looks kind of awake. I'm very thankful that Mary Marie Bourquet is looking me in the eye. Um, everyone seems to be paying attention to me, which I'm very, very thankful for because in the past, um, you all kind of get like sleepy eyed. Um, you don't listen, um, which is interesting because we elected you to listen to us. Um, and um, I, the, every, like I said, everyone has pretty much said everything, but I'm um, going to reiterate because it doesn't seem to like get through your skull. So um, no cops in schools. You've heard testimonials from countless youth who feel unsafe from with EROs in schools you know why they shouldn't be there. Invest the $360,000 into empowering youth. You cannot commit to black excellence and have police in schools. You cannot commit to thriving schools when people of color are disproportionately targeted by the police. There's, no, there's way too much evidence of which of this which Freedom Inc. has continuously brought to you. Put the money into youth leadership. Um, put that money into youth leadership, bus passes, sex education, culturally competent counselors, better and free lunches, and so much more. Um, give the community control over discipline. Let parents, guardians, family, and real community members have a say in how their youth are being disciplined in schools. No one knows the students better than the people who know them. Um, I went to a high school that did not have EROs and our students were safe. We thrived. We were taught restorative justice, real restorative justice. I want to reiterate, reiterate that point because this was kind of like fake restorative justice. Um, and we knew how to handle conflict because of it. Schools in Denver, Oakland, and Baltimore have replaced detention with meditation and yoga, and there have been zero suspensions since. The issue is not the students. It is the system that shoves marginalized students into prisons. The issue is that MMSD is choosing to conspire with a system that is ch the child of s the slave patrol. We, we That's okay. Um, Amy, were, were you finished? Because I don't want to speak um, at the cost of someone else being cut off. I think this is really disrespectful. You've had people standing up here saying that they feel like they're being reduced to numbers. And yet that timer's still going. It's still taking up your time as well as finishing mine. So no problem in schools. Um, do better because we see you every time and we are the people who will be able to vote. We will be voting you out if you can't listen to us because we are the people that are being Excuse me, you are taking up her time and you already spoke. No, you, you actually cannot give someone else your time. I'm not interested in speaking at the cost of other people. It's, I don't have anything new to say that hasn't been said here. I'm here because I'm watching, this community is watching. We're seeing the way that you disrespect and ignore these students and community members that are showing up here, taking their time to advocate for their schools and for better education in a way that I haven't seen any of you do. 
I don't know if you recognize me, Mary. Um, I worked on your governor campaign in 2014. I spent 90 hours a week working for you for months. And I'm ashamed to have done that. That was when I believed in electoral politics. And I'm just proven over and over that there's nothing there to believe in. It's unfortunate that you hold this office. And I think if you can't, all of you, not just Mary, I think if you can't listen to students and educators and community members who are coming here to tell you what they need in their schools, then you're not qualified to hold these positions. I'll say the demands again that have been said before because they still aren't being addressed appropriately. They are still aren't being respected. You're taking the language that community members and especially Freedom Inc. have put forward and you're just making it into words with no real meaning behind it. It's not real restorative justice. It's insulting for you to put in your report that education resource officers share a commitment to racial justice. We all know that's not true. Students are coming here telling you that's not true. We demand the complete removal of cops from Madison schools, from all schools. We demand that you reinvest that money into programs that support youth of color. And we demand that you give community members control of community safety in schools. Thank you. That was powerful, thank you, Lila. Uh, so I'll just begin by telling a story about how cops in schools don't actually support the education of students of color, especially black and brown students, but it actually threatens their safety instead. So in September 2014 in Tampa, Florida, uh, after a report of having mace, two assistant principals in the school's lunchroom confronted a black woman student, Brittany Overstreet. A school resource officer grabbed the student's ankles and snatched her legs out from under her. Twice, the officer, first against the table and then onto the ground, slammed the student, Brittany, breaking her jaw. No mace was ever found. Brittany received a 10-day suspension. Let that sink in. Those stories, whether it's Tampa or here in Madison, happen all the time, regardless of the sugarcoating that's happening up here earlier. So regardless of the extent to which these EROs really make a positive impact, I know you have your select few who you all deem as champions and um, are supposed to be these positive reflections of having cops in schools. The answer is you all need to listen to the youth of color who are telling you that the people who are armed and wearing a badge, there is no soft uniform. Those are the people who actually do indeed pose a threat to their existence. Um, whether it's physical force or citations and ticketing that really gets them into the school to prison pipeline, these are things that totally decimate their ability to live and to be young people. So what I ask is, how are we really honoring youth voice as this highest decision-making authority for all things relevant to their lives, to their services, to their interests? Instead, it's you all, these grown-ups, who are so emboldened to make the decision to throw $360,000 per year at a problem that is systemic and to use cops themselves as the safeguard to violence, even though it is the cops themselves who pose a clear and present <laughs> danger to the youth of color, not the other way around. I wanna reiterate Freedom Inc.'s No Cops in Schools campaign demands. Number one, remove cops from all four of the high schools and two of the middle schools. Those two middle schools we haven't been talking enough about what their, what the police's roles at the middle schools have been. We only have been hearing about La Follette, Memorial, East and West. We need to make sure we're comprehensively talking about this and we need to remove all the police from each of those spaces and environments. We need to invest resources in education that promotes leadership, wellness, learning, and creativity for youth of color. And I know you all in the previous meeting talked about doing some of that, but what you all need to do is make sure that it's the youth themselves who control those resources, not just are given peanuts to put on Black History Month, but are actually given living wages to actually run programming and recreate the culture from the inside out, the youth leading that. And, I'll, and of course, build the infrastructure and climate of transformative justice instead of punishing youth, and give youth and families, us, decision-making power for the distribution of rights and resources in those schools. Thank you.